Mandy. Hello. How's it going? It's going great. You have your afternoon water? It's not coffee. I know. It's not. It's sad. It's, I need it. It's two o'clock. That's okay. Great to see you all again. We're back for the fourth annual Do Some Good publication. I can't believe it's been four years. Where has the time gone? To COVID. I the time has gone to COVID. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I almost heard your voice. I don't know. <laughs> so really excited to be back with you guys. We're pumped to be in the fourth year of this. This is the second year that we've interviewed all the organizations that are a part of the publication. So we're giving everyone the opportunity to come on with us and chat, and we're really excited about that. So uh, y'all hang out just a moment, and then we're going to tell you who we've got on today. Hey, hey, We're I back. am thrilled about today because we have on not one, but two ladies, one of the largest organizations in the Southwest. And I'm so super excited. Like it, this organization does so much on its own and it does even more with other partner agencies in the area. So I am super excited to have on. I'm going to give everyone... You got three seconds to guess. Okay, now you can tell. Okay, okay. Can tell. yeah. Um, we have on Justine and Jill with right. United Way, and let's just go ahead and bring them Heck out. Yeah, United Way, just a second. Hey, ladies, welcome. Hey, hey all. Love Thank y'all for being with us. Love the energy. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I saw, uh, I saw Justine. I saw you kind. I saw you jamming to the little intro music there. Oh, you can yeah. see that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was look, talking to in my office and just. I, no. Anytime I see someone doing that, I'm like, good. I'm glad someone appreciates the little, the <laughs> little, the little day. tune there. Yeah. Well, okay. Wow. So we, we like starting off by, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people will know the brand United Way, but um, I want to start off like I'm a stranger. I meet you on the street at a local Mardi Gras parade. We're catching moon pies together. We're hanging out. And you tell me that you work with United Way. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I've never heard of that. Like, what does that do? Um, what would y'all, obviously the, the, the world is your oyster at this moment to, to give me. Justine, you want to go or you want me to? Hit it. So the oh, United I Way of Southwest Alabama is uh, affiliated with the United Way worldwide. Um, we actually started almost a hundred years ago. So 2026, is that right, Justine? It's going to be our hundredth anniversary. Mm -hmm. We started as the community chest and then morphed into the United Way of Southwest Alabama. Even though we're part of the large national organization, um, we are guided, um, managed by volunteers that live in Choctaw, Clark, Mobile, and Washington counties. That's our footprint. And we basically convene um, different agencies, governments, individuals, businesses, um, we plan and then we implement. And a lot of what we do is also fundraising to fund convening, planning, and implementing um, to solve our community's problems. So in a nutshell, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah it, it did. But then it see, so we're strangers at this Mardi Gras parade. So it's bringing up so many additional questions, which is the whole the whole point of this, right? So I, I, I think my next question would be, okay, what does that mean? The the planning, um, I, I forgot the phrase that you use, but that you do plan and implement. Yeah. So so let's so let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, what does that like? What does that entail in a general sense? So we we um, Justine is our director, our, our vice president of resource development. So she raises the funds needed to do the convening, planning, and implementing. And then Trista Stout Walker is our vice president of community impact. And so she pulls together volunteers. We work with forty six partner agencies that get funding from us in four counties. Um, but we also work with hundreds of other nonprofits and organizations in the community. Um, and wow. we, and so Trista and her group will say, this is a problem that we're seeing. Like when COVID hit, mm -hmm. we started something called the, um, help me adjusting the community. Community crisis Crystal. fund. Cr well, the, yeah, that we did that with the community resource network. Oh yeah. The community resource network to, uh, to help bring people together in the community to talk about some of the needs that they had, they've seen and how we can all work together to do some good. 
I love it. That's uh, fantastic. So and they, the, still, they still meet monthly. They still meet monthly to talk about everything. And it's everything from COVID to natural disasters mm -hmm. to, you know, we just don't have enough volunteers or we need food or somebody needs a roof on their house. That's cool. Is the United so is the United Way more like a funnel organization that is like a, a, an umbrella that is able to channel with all the other agencies? Like I feel like it's similar to how the um, how feeding the Gulf Coast maybe operates, like a, a large organization that works with a number of other organizations and helps them implement what they're doing. Is that is that accurate? When I'm like kind of what I'm what I'm thinking. They stole our model, but they're one of our partner agencies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big deal. You're like, yeah, they got it from us. Like, of they're, course. They're, they're one of our very, very old partner agencies. They used to be Feeding the Gulf Coast. And now, yep. uh, I mean, um, was it Feeding the Gulf Coast? Is that what they are now? I, I, I couldn't they, remember. I think they were Bay Area. They, they, were, they, they were the food bank. Are. Yeah, in my head, I was trying to think of the correct name yes, as I was And, and I apologize. It. I forget stuff on a regular basis. But, um, so, we all do. It's good. So, so, um, so yes, it is. We, we go out to businesses and that's Justine's primary job is to go out to large industries, individuals and raise that money. And then Trista's crew, it's all volunteer driven. Nobody at United Way makes any decisions about where the money's going. That's all just like y'all could join any of those committees and help decide where the money's going. Gotcha. Uh, interesting. Okay. I didn't, Very I didn't cool. know that. So, um, okay. I mean, that's, that's an interesting piece to me. And I, I doubt, I doubt, uh, the public knows any of mm -hmm. that. So, so you're out there, you're raising funds, funds come in. And then what are these, like the committees you're saying they're made up of, they're made up of volunteers. And so they choose where the funds go. How many of these committees are there? Where, how, how, do, how does this work? Well, there's one for each County. Okay. And so the money raised in Choctaw County stays in Choctaw County. Justine, jump cool. in. I'm talking too much. You go. <laughs> no, you're fine. I mean, Jill's spot on. Like everything we do is super hyper local. And so each county that we serve in that four county footprint has its own allocations panel. And that's the group of volunteers that gets together to decide at the time what's the biggest need in, in the community and how the dollars are invested. And they decide because they review a series of applications from our nonprofit partners like Feeding the Gulf Coast. Um, and so they're able to look at that snapshot in time and see what the biggest needs are in that moment. And so they can see a lot of times those applications have similarities in them um, of what's going on. Like with COVID, we saw a lot of housing and utility assistance, food. Um, and so they can see that that right there is the biggest need, you know, what's going on. A lot of people that sit on the allocations panel are our business partners that I work with on the resource development side. So we, of course, are asking them to make a contribution back to their community. And then we give them the opportunity to decide how it's contributed. Very cool. That, yeah, that makes complete sense, right? And, then, and yeah. they also decide who the partner agencies are. We don't make that decision by staff either. That's all done through volunteers too. And they actually go out and visit the partner agencies. We review their audits annually. Um, we are very thorough. Our volunteers are very thorough about making sure that these are really good agencies doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So they're applying every year to be a part underneath United Way every two mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did not know that. I thought maybe once they were in, they were in. So that's actually really, that's another layer of accountability um, just to make sure that they're doing what they're doing. One of the biggest things that I think that I would like to highlight with what you guys do is, is how you get your funding. You guys put on an ton of events throughout the year. And um, let's talk about that for a second, because I know you guys have some stuff coming up and you've already had some things happen this already this year in 2022. Uh, tell me, how do you raise your funds? <laughs> yeah, so uh, most most of the way that we raise our funds is we partner with literally hundreds of businesses in that four county footprint on an annual basis. And they um, we ask them to consider a corporate contribution and then also if their employees would consider a workplace giving campaign. Oh, wow. And so a lot of people don't know that either. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work. But basically, we go out and say, we'll take a company like Austell, for example. Okay. We go out, we'll talk to their leadership. We'll see if it's something that they're interested in doing. They say yes. And um, then we run that campaign with their employees where we come out and we speak to, in that case, thousands of employees. Yeah. Um, and ask them to consider making a gift to United Way. And one of the best things about that model is, is you can make a modest gift through a payroll deduction. Um, a lot in a lot of instances or most instances where the only nonprofit that you're able to do payroll deductions for 
to the I was wondering about that. That's incredible. So you don't have to worry about going out and waiting for somebody to mail something in or send you a donation later. It's something that they literally can, they can sign up through with their employer. It's autopilot. It's like signing up, you know, your credit card or debit card and, and doing recurring payments, but it comes right out of your payroll. The HR department at the company handles it and you can make a more modest gift that rolls into a humongous impact when you combine it with your coworkers, your neighbors, your friends and family. And so, um, you know, something that they might not feel a lot at the time versus saying, why don't you, make, you know, would you consider doing $5 a pay period versus will you write a check for $5,000? Um, it doesn't right. sting as much, <laughs> but right. they can still make a huge impact with their gift. So whenever you're going out to look for companies like this, are you looking for size or does that matter? Like if there's a small mom and pop down the road and they're like, we love United Way, let's get involved. Can they participate as well? Absolutely. Um, okay. Kind of one of my favorite things about United Way is there's a place, a home for everybody, and your gift is totally customizable to however you want to give back to your community. Um, it doesn't go, you know, routed one direction. You can split it. You can, um, you know, or you can support United Way, and you know you're supporting 46 nonprofit partners that provide a wide range of work in the community. Um, you know, throughout the year, but we work there, we work with everybody. A lot of our smaller businesses uh, join us on United Way Day. And during that time, um, people either can give back, like at the register, round up their change, you know, donate a, in the change jar at the register um, or make a contribution through any of our businesses that participate. And it's a lot of restaurants, retail businesses, um, shoe station donates a dollar for every shoe, pair of shoes sold. Um, so there's a lot of ways to customize it. Now, that's a huge, huge business, um, but it's a way that some of our local restaurants and smaller shops can give back to. That is fantastic. That is huge. And I don't think it, people realize what a big campaign that is. You guys work all year gathering as many companies as you can to be a part of that. And that is huge for you guys. I've heard about it. I see it. They have sometimes they have posters in the windows or stickers in the door and to, to say that they're part of you guys. That's amazing. These methods are genius. I know. I, I'm sitting here like I'm sitting here just just hearing all the uh, the ways that people can get like you make it you make it easy. Like I always say, like anytime you can remove friction from a process things become easy if you tell me as an uh, as an employee and i want to help and i can i can give some money off the top without writing funds back to you later you just made it easy that's 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 just such a good it's just a good thing i mean people i think a lot of people want to do good and sometimes it's difficult mm -hmm. uh it just becomes difficult and if you can make things easy i think people would do more uh, and also you know you're, you're supporting actually 47 agencies because you're supporting the united way and we do have our own internal programs but I'm not going to stroke a check to 47 agencies. Right. I'm not. I'm not exactly. going to do that. So, right. And so most of our most of our partner agencies, their clients have more than one need. And I, I, I worked for two partner agencies before coming to United Way. So I know the agency side, but usually if they have one need, there's multiple needs. And so when I was at St. Mary's Home, and that's where I first met y'all when I was at St. Mary's Home. And um, yep. You know, we partnered with agencies on a daily basis to take care of those children. We couldn't do it by ourselves. You know, we partnered with Feeding the Gulf Coast because that's where we bought our food. Um, unfortunately, we had to have the children drug tested because of their backgrounds. And so Drug Education Council would do drug testing, but they would also come do programs about how to be sober and live sober. We worked with Lifelines Family Counseling. They came out and did things. For, I mean, so of the 46 partner agencies, I can go down the list and tell you how on a regular basis at St. Mary's Home, we worked with those other 46. So when one of those 46 suffers, then it affects my agency too. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's, it's about building a safety net for the community. You know, those, yeah. those 46 agencies with us are the community safety net. That's so good. And yeah, it's a really good um, example, like a visual example. And the, and, and a lot of times the people, like, like you said, as an individual, you don't want, you don't want to write 47 checks or hear 47 stories, but you can write to an organization and trust that there's committees of volunteers that know the needs and can like, you know, uh, disseminate that money in a, in a good way. And you can feel good about that. And again, that's another way of, for me, like the, the way I operate. It's, again, it's reducing friction and just making it easier and just knowing that like, this good's being done. And then you can check in if you want to and see all the agencies and, and find all that out. Right. I mean, I'm sure that that's a part of the. J Justine says this all the time to her friends. Don't you want to know where your money's going? <laughs> Don't yeah, you right? want to know yeah. who's responsible for that? And yeah. so um, we're, you know, our committees are very serious about making sure that our partner agencies and us 
are using that money wisely. And a lot of our partner agencies will take our, our gift to them from, from our donors and then they use it to get as matching money. So Mm -hmm. it's anywhere from like $11 drawn down. So if you give a dollar to United Way and we give it to a partner agency, they can use it to draw $11 down. And in some cases, what's victory, Justine, how much is victory? 47. $47 $47 per dollar they're gifted from United Way. So they can turn that around by leveraging their connections with other partner agencies um, that they work with through our, you know, our community and um, are able to leverage a $47 impact from a dollar gift from United Way. That is insane. So basically just through relationships and connections of other agencies working together can just kind of multiply the effect of the dollar that's coming in. Is that or like or like Penelope House? Penelope House uses our donation as a matching fund. So Got they it. can pull down state and federal dollars that they would never have gotten. Got so it. Brand that's new brilliant. money. Yeah, like on some of their huge community. grants, they have to have a 10% match that they put up. So when they Got apply it. for funding from United Way, they're asking for that match. And then that funds a hundred thousand dollars for their shelter, you know, for their shelter. Got it. That's really cool. Okay. Okay. That's amazing. So okay, do um what are what are kind of the size of the, the of the agencies that you guys work with? I mean, I'm sure obviously you've got to be somewhat established, but if someone is a small organization and they're kind of you know, trying to say, oh man, one day, or I want to figure out how I can work with United Way. Like how, like, what does that look like for a path of a, <laughs> of, of a, of a, of an age, of a organization? We, there are a plethora of nonprofit organizations in the community that are needed. Um, our board recently voted to put a moratorium on accepting new agencies until we can raise some more funds because totally. um, the last few years have been really tough on our partners um, so, oh, yeah. so, so, um, we have very small agencies, Crittenden teen services is a very small, a local agency all the way up to, to good, to a uh, goodwill to United States cerebral palsy, Salvation Army, Red Cross, those yeah. are some of our partners, um, locally, okay. you've got Penelope house, child daycare, feeding the Gulf coast. Um, so we have a lot of small agencies. Got it. And we help them through that process too, right, Joe? Like when they, um, and this is, you know, this is Trista, the community impact side of our work, which is t- different from my resource development side. But um, when, if any agency is considering applying to be a partner, we help facilitate, look, this is what you need. You need a 990, you need a board, you need bylaws. And so we help walk them through that process. I know in one case recently, there was a food pantry in Choctaw County um, that was interested in being a partner agency. Uh, for obvious reasons, um, there's great connections with other agencies in the community. There's the funding opportunity. Um, there's some sales tax benefits as a result of, of partnership with the United Way. Um, but then once they started looking into all the requirements, they thought, you know, we just really want to get food and give it out. And um, through kind of a faith based uh, food pantry, we don't really yeah. want to get into all this. And so we were able to connect them with Feeding the Gulf Coast, which is an established partner agency. So Feeding the Gulf Coast actually helps take food to that food pantry and they get it out in Choctaw Can- County. Um, but they didn't, they decided to not go through the partnership process. So yeah. gotcha. that, make, that makes sense. I was actually, as you're telling the story, I was like, well, why wouldn't they just go to Feeding the Gulf Coast? Because that's, yeah, it, so that makes sense. It sounds like that's a great outlet for them, uh, for, for, for what they do. So, and there's, it, Obviously, Feeding the Gulf Coast works with a bunch of, I forgot what they said. It was a ton of food agencies. So they're, they're working with you. You're one of their agencies. And then they're turning around and helping tons of other smaller, you know, organizations that are helping with food pantries and stuff. It's, this is really interesting. To it me. takes a village. Well, let's talk yes. about a little bit of the impact that you guys have because you guys have something called Volunteer Connect. And so this is huge. I want everyone out there who is listening or watching, I want you to pay attention very closely to this. What we're going to talk about is because one of the questions we always get asked is how can we get involved? So you guys have Volunteer Connect. So tell us about that. Yeah, it's what Jill mentioned that we have internal programs here, too. We have uh, about 12 internal programs that we operate in addition to about the 96-ish that we fund from those 46 agencies on an annual basis. And one of those programs uh, is Volunteer Connect. And any, it's basically like a dating service for volunteers. And, <laughs> like um, nice. and swipe right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> there's plenty of fish out there for um, <laughs> plenty of volunteer opportunities. Justin, I uh, never thought about it that way, but that's a great way to describe it. I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it basically helps connect the volunteer to people who have a need. And like a lot of people, you know, when you're coming home from college or you're uh, you maybe moved to town, you work for an Oslo or Airbus and um, you're, you're not from here and you want to volunteer, but you don't really know where to start. This mm -hmm. platform makes it super easy. There's an app on your phone. Um, and basically you sign up, you can sign up and click a uh, different, like if you're into the environment, health, education, financial, you know, assistance, um, helping people with those things, you can click on different uh, like tags and it'll email you those opportunities as they arise. And then on the flip side, businesses can go in there um, or nonprofits rather nonprofits can go in there and put their um, need, their volunteer needs. So, Penelope House might say, I need help painting the shelter this Saturday. We need 50 volunteers and people can go in there and sign up for those. And then there's a community calendar, which has, you can list all the events. So if you have like a chocolate festival, like Penelope House or a food truck festival um, or anything like that going on, and you might need volunteers for that, or you just want to tell the community, you know, what's going on. And know y'all have y'all's events calendar too. Um, it just We've helps. worked with, I mean, we have worked with you guys for so long and you guys have, you an amazing resource for things to do to, the ways to give get involved and give back you know you know fundraisers are primarily the events that happen in mobile um i don't know if all cities are like that across america but whenever you look at the the, the events that we have they it is typically a fundraiser for for some sort of organization so yeah. it's really cool that y'all have that resource and that's open to any nonprofit. That's not just limited to our 46 partner agencies. Oh. That's open to any nonprofit in the community. Any Fantastic. Nonprofit. Fantastic. So there's an app that you can download. That's what I, I want people to hear this. I wish we could like make a billboard. There's an app that you can download. It comes to you. They have already done all the dirty work for you. You basically get connected with ways that you can get involved. So I love it. Um, and something else that I want to talk about is you guys have partnered with Lifelines and there is a number. It's 211 um, that anyone at any time can call. Correct. Definitely. And yeah. So tell us about that. So 211 was established by Congress, so it's a national number. So okay. it's, it's like 911, but it's for anybody who has any needs that are social service related. So if you are looking for a local Boy Scout troop and you just moved to Mobile, you can go on there. You can call 211 and they'll tell you where the closest Boy Scout troop is. If that you're is looking, incredible. If you're looking for food. They'll tell you where the closest food pantry is because you'll give your zip code and your needs. But they also start asking you other questions. Like if you're needing food, what about medications? What about rental assistance? Mm -hmm. Do you need any mental health counseling? Do you need any, um, uh, do you need any um, medical care? So they, they're trained specialists that will, and volunteers too, that will ask these questions and not just say, oh, well, here's the closest food pantry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's all free and confidential and you can text the number too. There's a number with two on you, one you can text so if like you're at work and you have a food insecurity and you don't want to like call in front of your employee and tell somebody mm -hmm. that you can text and they will respond back to you with, with the, um, you know, agency near you or, or agencies near you that can help meet that need. Is that the text number as well? Two one one or is it a different number? It's a know? different number. It's a different number. Okay. Well, obviously, uh, you can tell who's the younger of the two of us because she keeps talking about all these apps and doing things on the phone. So thank God I've got young staff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, but that is awesome. That's a resource that, you know, I think it's important that we let people know about because you are right. Y'all are both correct. Whenever somebody has some sort of need, it's typically not just one thing. It's typically more than one. And maybe they just haven't gotten to their list of things if they need somewhere to sleep tonight or if that yeah if they are have an illness and they need to be partnered with victory or something like that um so that is very incredible that you guys are part of that as well and then i think brooks is he is if you if you're watching you can see that he's looking he's well, looking at a different screen yeah i'm trying to see if we can find the the text right number here. i wonder if that's a eight nine eight two one one does that does that sound right it's eight 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 four two one one two six six eight 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 Okay. Four two one one two six six, and you can call okay. or text that number, or you can call two one one, but can't text two one one. You and me were thinking alike. You were clicking over there. You were looking for it too. I was looking for it because we were talking about it. And I just if if someone if someone heard, I wanted them to be able to hear hear that number. Justine, it say it so again. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. One one more time, if you don't mind. Eight 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 four two one one two six six. 
All cool. right, fantastic. We'll make sure we include that in the show notes as well. That's um, awesome. Okay, and so something else I want to talk about. You mentioned y'all. This is this is from your write up, your amazing write up. But y'all, y'all really need like six pages in the Do Some Good magazine <laughs> yeah, yeah. to really go over all the things that you do. But you mentioned earlier we've talked about you know healthcare and medications. Um, single care is something that I think I'm so glad that you guys um, included that in your write up because that is something that. Um, also goes along the lines of needs that are in this community. So um, single care, what is it? Uh, single care, it's a prescription savings card and anyone can utilize the card with or without insurance. Basically, you get a login to, Jill's going to laugh at me, but there's an app. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you can log into the app and um, say you had, uh, you had a uh, like strep throat and you needed antibiotics and they called you an amoxicillin. You can go online, Google or type in Google so ingrained in my brain search <laughs> on single care um, amoxicillin and it'll show you the pharmacies near you that have it at the least expensive price. Mm -hmm. And you okay. can just show them your single care card when you get there and they'll give you that discount. That is incredible. And is that open to everyone? Everyone can use it with or everyone. without insurance. And it, it's actually from a partnership from most major like big box pharmacies. So a lot of people ask us, oh, do you provide people discount prescriptions from the money you raise in campaign? Answer is no. It's because right. the pharmaceutical companies have par partnered with single care to offer discount prescriptions to anybody who has the card. And so we help get oh. those cards out into community members' hands. And, you know, and every, year we, every year we get numbers from single care. It's over a million dollars brought back into our community on savings for drugs. So what that means is that people were able to take their medicines, but then they could pay their rent and purchase food and pay their power bill. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about people getting medicine, which is very important, but right. they can take care of themselves too and keep a roof over their head and have something to eat. Absolutely. You don't want to have someone having to make the decision between picking up a medication or, or feeding their family for the next three weeks. It's it's crazy how high medication costs can be, um, especially if you're uninsured. So this is it's an incredible that um, partnership that you guys have with them. Um, and so we talked about funding a little while ago and some events and some things coming up. You guys have a long list of things that you have in our magazine that anyone can pick up and see. Um, you'll have some dates along with those as well. But I kind of I want to touch on a few that are coming up soon and let's see um okay so one of the cool things which i feel like is new it's, it's inaugural so yes it is new the fins <laughs> fishing classic i love this idea especially for our area we have a lot of fishermen out there and they um they love being part of things like this so tell us about that justin go ahead dear yeah, we're really excited. It is our first year to start the event, and it actually uh, was born from our board member, Joe Caligas, who um, owns Caligas Printing, um, and they, he also owns Finn's Apparel. So I'm sure a lot of people on the Gulf Coast are used to seeing those t-shirts that have mm -hmm. the, the beautiful fish on the back. The design's incredible. It has a scientific name on it. My husband pretty much has one on every single day that he's not wearing his business clothes. Um, he, in fact, he even has his nice fin shirts and his not as nice fin shirts like <laughs> for the yard or for the boat, and then others that are for you know. Um, it's the comfort Christmas. colors. Yeah. They do it on the comfort. Oh man, the comfort it's colors. The best t-shirts. Shirts. They got a front yes. pocket. Everyone yep. loves them. Yes, um, and that's probably how most people are familiar with fins. But um, so they want to. They decided to start a fishing tournament that's virtual um, to create a super broad impact across all United Ways across eight states. And Alabama is one of those states, Texas, Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. It's our goal. And this Coast. isn't just, yeah, this is like, this is not just a weekend or a day. This nope, is spread you, out. Yeah. Yeah. They can do it. It starts April 9th and they can fish until May 1st. You can sign up the whole entire time during that um, time frame to fish. It's $35 a ticket. And over um, all the prizes, it's up to like ten thousand dollars in prizes that are be, that are being given away um, for fishing. And so, how you do it is you, it's it, there's an app for that. You, uh, <laughs> they, they I was waiting, waiting for that. I was uh, waiting for that. With fishing chaos, which is a very well known fishing yep. company local, they have a spot on Dolphin Street uh, downtown. Yep. And um, they ha host this platform basically for the virtual fishing tournaments. And so, fishermen uh, and women sign up fish take a picture of it upload it online and then and they can like measure it and weigh it i guess they have to take a picture of it with a scale and that, that's above my uh pay grade but uh, they verify 
And um, that's how they submit the fish. And so you can fish with a boat, without a boat, on a bank, in a kayak, in an inner tube if you want, uh, a bamboo pole. They don't care. Um, okay. that you And you can submit um, fish the whole entire time from April 9th to May 1st and win a lot of nice prizes. Each week, too, they're doing a weekly drawing. So they're giving away like Yetis and Finn's t-shirt prize mm-hmm. packages, gift cards, sunglasses, Um and like rulers you can measure fish with anything you can use on a boat um gps um you know all those things so it's really exciting um and i can't remember the exact number but it's something like how many fishermen um it was born because they were like a lot of people golf but it's like six times the amount of people fish in, in golf. <laughs> yeah and so yeah. they were like when they first came to us and we're like y'all should do a fishing tournament we were like what you know uh what does that have to do with the work we do? And and the the great tie-in is that pretty much just like fishing and United Way both can impact in anybody. <laughs> you Amen, know, you, right? you can't throw a rock around the Gulf Coast without finding either somebody United Way is impacted or somebody who fishes. So it made perfect sense. That is absolutely correct. I feel like Jill's looking something up for us while we're while we're talking something about maybe the number of people that are that fish. Registered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not putting my hands on it, but it's a ridiculous number. And and also, this is a qualifying event. They actually give out college scholarships for fishing now. Did you what? know that? Yes. I signed my son up. This is incredible. I love they this. Give, this is a qualifying event for okay. high school students for college. This, and also, okay. We, could, yeah. we, we need to talk more about that. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's serious. So, um, but it's... Um, Fishing Chaos actually created the virtual fishing tournaments, didn't they, Justine? I think so. It started with them. So, so they know what they do. They know. How it works on the back end. Yeah, they know what they're doing, and they do over 500 a year. So for $35, this is a fairly cheap oh, yeah. tournament that you can fish in your own backyard wherever you live in one of those eight states. I love it. What an incredible idea. And, you know, when it comes to fundraising, I think one of the cool things is whenever you have an idea like this, that literally anyone can participate in all ages, everything like that. So that's, that is awesome. So it starts April 9th and it runs through May 1st. May 1st. I'm glad you went into the details on it. No, it's it's actually, it's actually a genius idea. I mean, now I'm thinking about it because I'm like, I, I guess when I saw virtual, I was like, oh, okay, that's like, that's cute. But I'm like, oh, wait, no, wait, wait, you just open this up where people don't have to fish in allotted three day time period and all be in one place. You can literally be anywhere and do it with this technology. Now I know the fish and chaos guys are smart. Um, so with their, with their tech and what they've got going on. So I can only, I'm going to go dive in deeper basically is what I'm saying and go look into it and see like, wait a minute, how does this work? The verification that's, that's exciting. I'm excited for y'all with this event and what I think it can do for United Way in the long term. I think it's a great, Absolutely. I think it's a great idea. Long term. That's why it was so super appealing to us is because anybody can do it from anywhere. You know, it, you don't have to fish for, uh, you know, snapper out in the Gulf. You can fish in rivers, creeks and streams all across Alabama or any of the eight states that are participating. And like Joe said, he like, he wanted to do some good, but he, he wanted to do more than just like write a check or make a corporate contribution. Mm-hmm. And so he wanted to figure out the way to make the biggest impact, you know, with one event. And so all the United Ways across those states benefit. And basically, it, it, whoever, however you sign up for your zip code, your contribution, a portion of your ticket automatically goes to that United Way. So you don't have to contribute anything else besides your entry fee. That is awesome. Oh, nice. I'm so glad that we brought that up. Okay. Cool. And then let's see. We Speaking of golf, in the fall, y'all do have a golf tournament coming up. So anybody who is interested in that world and that sport, um, they can also participate and help raise funds for you guys as well. Um, is this something, Is the Williams Golf Tournament, is this something that is new for y'all or is this something that you guys have done in the past? This is a long running golf tournament for us. And I wish I knew the year, but I don't. I would say like 15 or 18 years. <laughs> it's or something. crazy. Um, and a lot of times, like we really don't, we don't start the event ourselves. It mm-hmm. ends up being from a company or a person like Joe Calagas that wants to figure out how to make the biggest impact for United Way. Um, and so like Williams golf tournament, for example, that's a Williams oil and gas, like pipeline company. They wanted to do something besides just giving a corporate contribution. So they get their right. suppliers to come to town, um, similar model of Austell's golf tournament, they sign up, they play, they get to all network together from their business standpoint. We come out that day, show them what United Way is all about, the agencies that we serve, you know, how it works. 
Um, and then we're able to be a beneficiary of the tournament. And so they really get that like nonprofits all across the nation are understaffed and, you know, just don't have the bandwidth to take on and do additional events themselves. So we oh yeah. like does all that for us. And then they're like, show up, help volunteer, tell them about what you do. And we want to help, you know, we want y'all to be a beneficiary of that event. So it's, it's such a like blessing because, um, you know, we wish we had the bandwidth to do events, you know, all the time. But so when these corporations really understand, you know, what, what they're, you know, what's going on and how we can best serve our time and how they can best serve and give back. Um, it's awesome. That's incredible. I, y'all have so many amazing partnerships and so many events that are happening throughout the year all the time to help spread awareness of what United Way does and then help fund the cause as well. Um, and then as I think, let's see, as we wrap up, Brooks Conkle here, he has a question that he likes to, I feel like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I, I will wrap up, but I was going to tell, I, I feel like he had, I was going to tell yeah. everyone that's watching or listening. I'm looking at this list and there's a large list of events here. So this is your cue to go read the, either the physical publication and go find the United way page, or you can hop on the mobile. Hey. Everyone's got the copy. Everyone's got their Woo! copy. Or if you don't have your physical one, you can get the digital version as well. You can go on the mobile rundown.com, click, do some good. And you can, you can, there's probably an app for that, but I'm not, I'm not completely sure. <laughs> But okay, <laughs> we're not cool like them yet. We're, we're as, getting there. We're not we're as cool there. as you guys. But uh, to yeah, to, to wrap up, I just want to make sure that like every organization, I give them the opportunity. Like, is there something that you wished that you got asked more that people don't ask you, or something we that we haven't touched on today? That you're like, man, I wish I wish they had asked us this. Um, that you guys could shine a light on even further. It could be a repeat of something that we already said. That it's it's. The world is your oyster with this, but does anything come to mind when I when I say that? I think that I think that people don't realize how many volunteers, hundreds of volunteers, it takes to run this organization. And we do have paid staff, and people have the misconception that everybody's getting rich that works here, and nobody getting rich working at the United Way. Um, but it takes hundreds and hundreds of volunteers to do this. And it really is the community's agency. I mean, we belong to the community. We've been here almost a hundred years and uh, have started lots of programs and agencies. And um, we just, we need to, the community to remember who we are and that we're, we're here every day in the trenches. And Justine, I'm sure you've got something you want to add. I mean, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, my heart gets richer every day. <laughs> um, I want people to know the biggest misconception, I think, is that although we are affiliated with United Way Worldwide, we are a very local organization. And that's what Joe is touching on. Like all those volunteers that help make decisions about how funding um, funding is allocated, they're, they're us. They're you. They're not our staff, us, but they're our community. And it's it's neighbors helping neighbors, you know with the need that they have. It's like the old concept of being able to knock on your neighbor's door and ask for a cup of sugar, you know, that we've come a long way from that and people don't like really do that anymore. Right. And so with, really with United Way, um, like when we come out and talk to a, a business and 200 people are in a room, there are people in that room every single time who they or their families have either benefited from a partner agency or a service that United Way or one of those agencies have provided. And some, it's an amazing, will stand up and tell all their coworkers that they did. Um, and then, you know, I can't help but think about all the those who, who you know, are less um, comfortable standing up and saying mm -hmm. that they were able to benefit. But they know that when their coworkers are giving, they're giving to them. You know, they're helping. Um, Ronald McDonald House is one of our partners. A lot of times we have somebody stand up and talk about how their baby was born premature. And so they stayed at Ronald McDonald House. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you live in a rural uh, community in Clark, Choctaw, Washington County, Ronald McDonald House is a huge blessing because you can't drive 90 miles every day back and forth to the hospital. Right. Yeah. Uh, especially now, you know, with gas being $5 a gallon. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, and so there's just thousands of stories like that, that are local people helping local people. And um, if I could say something that wasn't asked or that's always a misconception is that we, we are here, we're right here in these local communities providing services and um, about 90, cent, 90 cents on every dollar we raise goes back into those programs. Um, you know, like Jill said, nobody's getting, getting rich working here. And so I think another <laughs> misconception, you know, is like, 
that the percentage of funding that that's given, you know, how much is actually put back into the programs. And like, when I say, don't you want to know how your money's being spent? And I ask my friends that, you know, I at work here because I'm comfortable knowing that the majority of the dollars that are raised 90 cents on a dollar are go directly back into programs and meet the wishes of the donor. Then the other 10% goes to fund our building, our staff, and the programs that we run internally here. So they also still go to provide direct services to people. Um, and so that's, you know, that's the biggest yeah. thing. I, I I've, got, I've got one more thing to add and just, you know, I'm sorry, but before we go, we constantly get that people won't give to us because we fund abortions. Okay. <laughs> so there might be some United Ways in other sections of the country that their volunteers deem that that's appropriate. In Southwest Alabama, we do not fund any agency that, that supports abortions. I did not know that. I'm glad that you clarified that. Okay. So lots, I had a county commissioner state that to me one time. I don't give because y'all support abortions. I said, we don't support abortions. And my board chair was sitting with me. He said, we've never supported an agency that, that does that. Our Catholic Social Services is one of our partner agencies. Um, mm -hmm. What's uh, Miss Diane's agency up in Clark County? Justine, help me. Alpha Women's Resource Center. And that's all they do is test and, and, and talk to women about making a good choice. Gotcha. Making a good choice. So, I'm so glad that you clarified that. Yeah, it's important to know. I think, you know, when anybody's looking to give, um, whether it's of their time or, or of their money to an organization, they they want to know those things like, you know, like that, that's a, that's a huge hot topic. Um, so I'm very glad that you clarified. And one of the things that Brooks and I, we, we personally love about United Way is especially talking to you and, and knowing um, to you guys and knowing others that are behind the scenes. I cannot think of another organization that has so many people behind the scenes who honestly and truthfully want to do so much good for our community. We know y'all's background. We know the other things that you guys have done. And that only happens, that only comes for somebody who is determined and motivated to make Mobile better in the surrounding areas. So Agreed. thank you guys for all that you guys do now and in the past for other organizations and other things, um, you know, that, the community needs needs people like you. We need a hundred of you um, all day, every day, thousands. Um, so thank you guys. We need people like y'all that are willing to share those positive stories. Absolutely, absolutely. That's all we. And it's today, contagious. Y'all are right? contagious. <laughs> Keep going. I love, I love that y'all have your magazines. That's awesome that you had your physical copy with you. Well, ladies, th thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for taking the, your time out today and uh, taking some time with us and and uh, shining shine the light on United Way and giving us that information. We we appreciate it, and we'll we we'll talk to y'all more soon. Thank y'all so All much. Right. Have a great week. All right, thank you. you. Come See volunteer. That, that's right. That's right. Deal. Come volunteer. I love it. Come volunteer. You. Swing right. a club. See you at the next event. <laughs> all all the all the things. All right, all right ladies. Thank you. That was awesome. Oh, it's so good. It makes my heart so warm, though, because, you know, just knowing that they are partnered with so many other, they're an organization who yeah. they're not just trying to do well for themselves. Their goal is to. Yeah. So they have their own internal programs yeah. and then they're just, yeah, we're working with countless other, 46, I think. She, she had, yeah. 47, 46. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. Uh, made my head go, whoo, you know. For sure. Um, it's it's amazing. And um, yeah. And by good, the way, just those ladies. I would like to remind the public that it's OK. It is OK for people to get paid to be part of an organization that is doing some good. Like, <laughs> yeah, I am right. so sorry. I have heard like, this so many times. How do, they, how do they think these things are run? Right. Like, no, you know? you, they, they working for free. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. would, would anyone work for free all day, uh, every day trying to save the world? No, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't. Um, we'll just do it all from our backyard. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So don't. Get mad when you find out yeah. that a nonprofit, somebody in a nonprofit made some money. Oh, my goodness. Don't get mad about it. Be thankful and know that they are there doing there, the, the there, best they can for our community. There's actually an amazing TED Talk on this I've heard before. Yeah. And the guy talked about uh, it was fundraising and people, people were upset about uh, whatever. Oh, you, you spent some money on marketing. I, I may even put a link to it because I've, I've seen this like three times before. Okay. Um, but he's like, this guy had was like a master marketer and spent whatever. And it was like a 10 X return on the investment dollar mm -hmm. and was like raised amazing amount of funds for the organization. He's like, uh, 
yes, like yeah. yes, yes, we yeah. wisely spend that money on. We on spend on marketing. Money. We spend on salaries. We spend, you spend on the things that help an organization become stable and that the, and put them in the position where they can do the best that it's, they can do. You know, it's perception. But there's all. There's always like. There's always. There's always chatter. Oh, always true. in the world. A everyone. Everyone has. Everyone has an opinion. Well, don't right? be part of that chatter. Well, we have good opinions. So let's, <laughs> let's keep it there. Any. Any. Uh, any final words today, or shall we? Get out and do some good. Get out and do some good, guys. We'll see you on the next one.